Hello everyone. Normally I record my videos in Hungarian first and then in English. This time I'm doing this in English because you're having the election, the general election today on the 4th. I'm recording this in the morning and I plan to post it sometime at noon, uh, London time. And the reason is because uh, it's a very peculiar uh, moment in time. First of all, it is the balsamic moon. So it is great for magic and all kinds of ceremonies, but not really general elections. Also, if you look around, you will see that the Tories, the Conservatives, are going to lose big time. Uh, someone said that the uh, that Labour will win as no other party has ever won uh, in English history, parliamentary history, of course. We will see. Uh, and uh, I listened to a couple of commentaries uh, both ways, I mean, both parties and whatever. I did, didn't didn't spend too much time. Quite interestingly, a couple of, uh, uh, maybe two weeks ago, I was in Goring uh, at one of my friend's house. Uh, we did a workshop there and uh, we were talking about the election. And she was asking me who I'm going to uh, to uh, vote for. And well, I said, of course, uh, it's reform, uh, nothing else. And I will tell you why. Those big parties, are nothing but hoaxes. Uh, labor is no longer labor because there are no people who, there are no workers anymore. And Tories are no longer Tories because they don't protect their countries. And uh, so if you look at, actually it was a time before Trump actually, it was there was a time in, in the uh, US elections where I realized that there's not, no, there's really no difference between, uh, um, you know, the Dem Democrats and the uh, uh, Republicans at all. They have the same policy. They just uh, sugarcoat it in a different way. They, they use a little bit different catchwords, but their policies are the same. And this is exactly uh, true for England as well. I don't think uh, you have uh, the globally, uh, actually, what I'm saying is you no longer have the traditional parties left and right. You have the globalists. And they could be Labour and they could be Conservatives equally. Or you have the localists, the uh, the Patriots. And uh, if you listen to what they are saying and listen how they are trying to put, protect things, um, well, you you have to think about uh, the, the fact that maybe the, the ones who try to keep the, uh, the order of all things, and they try to to keep the uh, the roots intact. Because if a nation loses its roots and loses its history, that's it. It's done for. So that's that's it for um, for just uh, uh, food for thought. And let's take a look at not the election, but the new moon, the Cancer new moon, which is on Sirius. And I gave the title of this particular video, star-studded cancer new moon on Sirius. Sirius and Canopus, of course, we're going to look at because those two fixed stars are very, very close to each other. Uh, by, uh, of course, astrological degree, not by uh, any any uh, way of the, uh, uh, I mean, not, not as territory. So this is the, uh, the new moon uh, in London, which is going to be exact right before midnight on the 5th, which is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we will be past the election already. But as you know, donations are usually acting before they become exact, just like transits, by the way. And if you take a look at the um, at the chart, you will see that Neptune is uh, already retrograde. And uh, at a very energetic point, it's at 29 degrees 55. It just turned retrograde on the first and second. It was uh, stationary, direct stationary retrograde, and now it's full blown retrograde. And it is coming up. And uh, funnily, uh, Pisces is the ascendant. And this is very, very similar. This chart is very similar to uh, the um, chart I, I an analyzed for the Hungarian EU leadership, uh, which we took, we took it over on the, uh, the 1st of July at uh, uh, midnight. I mean, the previous midnight, whatever, zero hours. And it's, it's a very similar chart, except there, Neptune was uh, stationary, which made a big difference because a stationary planet is always very, very strong in its own energy pattern, in its own um, uh, uh, function. And here, Nep Neptune is retrograde, and uh, 
I did a study uh, which was very funny because uh, as I was talking about um, to my students about the, the the current energies and the current ideas, and I said to them that it, it is so close what's happening in, in the general public is so close to what happened in the United States during the witch hunts and the witch trials. And I th thought my, to myself, okay, I bet that Neptune was in Pisces even then. And yes, Neptune was in Pisces around 15 degrees when the trials were going on. Now it's of course at the end, but if you look at the last uh, 18 years, the madness, the, the craziness, how, how all the woke idiocy, the, the green agenda idiocy, the uh, the intersectionality, this die, die you know, it's, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. It, all this, it's so much bullshit. And uh, this bullshit is flying around. And funnily, luckily, it's the young people who realize that this is complete bullshit. It's the middle-aged uh, the, 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 who are falling for this, but the young are seeing through it, which is, I'm very, very grateful. Anyhow, so this is a very similar chart, but uh, we do have some differences. The main difference is that Neptune is retrograde and uh, Pisces rising always kind of blurs things. So we will see what's happening. And with Neptune, of course, a lot of ideology is flying around. Other highlights of the uh, London chart is uh, the Chiron Aries conjunction, which will be exact in a couple of weeks. Dark Moon Lilith is just conjunct uh, Jupiter. It was conjunct Uranus in the EU chart for Budapest, for, for Hungary. Now it's uh, there, so the, the curse. <laughs> and probably, just probably, Rishi Sunak is going to be one of the uh, dumbest uh, um, leaders of the uh, of the uh, uh, the the, the uh, conservative party when it goes into history, you will see because how idiotic is this election? How idiotic can you be to have an election in the middle of uh, of uh, the summer uh, when everyone is looking at uh, trying to take a vacation? And also, uh, very funnily, because yes, the uh, I can see signs that the uh, English uh, economy kind of turned around. I mean, inflation went down a little bit, um, energy prices went down a little bit, but it has not dribbled down to the general public yet. So you see the figures, which are quite promising, but actually the, the, the general public, the people only see the hardship. So of course they will punish the, uh, the government, of course, with their votes. That's the only, that's the only way. I mean, for, every four years, we have the right to put an X to somewhere and and express our either our gratitude or our total disgusting uh, being uh, totally disgusted with the government. That's it. Okay, so then you have the new moon, of course, in the fifth house. Very, I mean, in technically in the fourth house, but very very close to the fifth. So they act in both houses. The fourth is, of course, tradition and the family at home and your land, uh, your homeland your nation, and the fifth, of course, is all kinds of joyful things, but also your children and your enterprise. And then we have the vertex uh, conjunct uh, the descendant, and descendant is, uh, is uh, open enemies, but also pacts and covenants and and, uh, and uh, all kinds of uh, contracts. And then uh, you have uh, Black Moon Lilith, which moved into Libra a couple of days ago, around one degree in, in Libra, still uh, very, very uh, conjunct the super galactic center. Now, what this particular chart has very, very highlighted is the fixed stars. And that is why I said it is a star studded. By the way, I'm not going to analyze the uh, the structures the, um, here uh, simply because that's not the focus of this particular new, uh, new moon. New moons are always about new beginnings. And if they had the election on the new moon, it would probably be a little bit stronger. With the balsamic moon, things are coming to an end. It's letting go, clearing the attic, throwing things into the garbage. And yes, the Conservative Party is going to be thrown into the garbage. And uh, by the way, they, <laughs> they deserve it. In every sense, they deserve it. Um, uh, what a horrible job they have not been doing since Boris Johnson, really. Okay, so here, here are the fixed stars. And I only 
kept here the um, uh, the planets and, and other celestial objects that have big star alignment. And there are quite a few. I, I, I don't think I've seen anything that star studied yet. So uh, in comic astrology, big stars denote higher dimensional world, worlds where the, 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 the soul, the incarnating soul uh, that chooses the earth plane could choose some, uh, one of these places. These are high, higher dimensional places where you don't have a physical uh, body. So you can't really play around with the senses and uh, the nerve endings and your human emotions, but you can learn things there. And this is how we look at it. Those are portals for higher dimensions. And the sun moon is conjunct to fixed stars, Sirius, which is the brightest star uh, in the uh, in the sky, is Alpha Canis Major. It's a, it has a minus uh, uh, magnitude, so it's really, really, really bright. You can't see it at the moment. You can only see it around uh, starting in uh, end of October, no, uh, beginning of November, really. And then Canopus, which is Alpha Carina, which is a much more southern star you never see it from London. And those two, two stars are very important because Sirius is, as the brightest star, gives you all kinds of prominence and, and all kinds of shining. And actually, yes, it is very much linked to magic, water and fire magic. And Carina is linked to the uh, funeral boats. So actually something is ending and something is beginning, just like new moons, actually, and Islamic moons and new moons do. On the London, in the London chart, on the midheaven, you have the galactic center. And the galactic center is where our galaxy, this, the Milky Way, uh, has its center uh, supermassive black hole. And the those spiral arms are connected there. So the energy swirl that is uh, coming down from there is really very unique. And uh, that is opening up the... the uh, um, the, the, the mid heaven for the London chart. And uh, the way I interpret it is that this particular defeat that the um, conservatives are going to live through may have for future politicians to rise a different generation, a nicer generation, a more pa patriotic, more common sense generation might uh, occur or might uh, result uh, from this particular one. On the IC, you have Betelgeuse and Polaris. Again, two very bright and important stars. Polaris is the current pool star. Alpha Ursa Minor, you can see it anywhere at any time at night when it's not overclouded. And Betelgeuse is Alpha Orion. It is the um, the eastern shoulder of Orion. And according to Bernard Brady, this is the, uh, the star that is that brings you unlimited success. And kind of it hints at both the the, uh, the parties that they used to have success and also Great Britain, which used to be Great Britain once, not anymore. On Venus, you have Pollux, which is Beta Gemini, but much brighter than uh, the Alpha star, which is uh, Castor. Pollux is, again, the um, well, actually the, the right shoulder of, of the, the Celestial Twins. And it denotes the suffering artist. And Venus is linked to art, uh, artistry and, and, uh, and art itself, not just money and love. On Jupiter, you have a Jupiter dark moon conjunction. You have Aldebaran, which is uh, the alpha star of Taurus, one of the royal stars of Persia, bringing you success and, uh, and uh, um, all kinds of, of uh, nice things if you keep your integrity, if you are uh, true to yourself and to your values and ideas. On Uranus, you have Algol, which is the uh, worst star uh, according to uh, tradition. Uh, by definition, stars cannot be bad. <laughs> they are not part of the human existence, the human uh, nature, so they can't. You, you can misuse them, yes. And Algol is uh, one of the main uh, stars for healing uh, really, really terrible feminine lives. Uh, persecution and all kinds of stuff, and Uranus is the liberator. On Neptune, you have Sheat, uh, uh, Beta Pegasus, and Sheat is the main healing word for suicide victims. On Pluto, you have Altair, which is uh, oh, why did I, why didn't I? Sorry, okay, Sagittarius. Sorry, I, I keep um, 
correcting my staff. This is what I do most of the time. I apologize. Anyhow, so on Nept on the Pluto, you have Altai, which is the Aquila, the Alpha Star of Aquila. And Aquila is one of the shaman or taltos, really, in Hungarian um, birds flying towards uh, the, um, the no actually, the, uh, the whole constellation, Aquila, is on the Milky Way, flying towards the north, flying towards the uh, uh, the fourth star, and the, uh, it, it represents the uplifting of all kinds of shamanic energies. On Ceres, nurturing principle, you have a cella, which is Zeta Sagittarius, which is somewhere in the middle of the celestial archer, kind of big. I, it, we usually say it's the belly button of uh, of uh, the, the, the the archer. So it's where the the center of your solar plexus is. So the power, the seat of power. On Pallas Athena, you have Zuben al Shamali, which is the, the beta star of Libra. And according to Bernard Brady, it it uh, sort of uh, negative social reform is linked to it. Pallas Athena is wisdom. And uh, what I glean from this placement is that we have been misusing democracy and all kinds of democratic uh, institutions in such a horrible and bad way that we really need to observe this. We need, really need to go back to normal normalcy. That's that's whole bit. And Pallas Athena is the wisdom, so we can actually do it through her. And on Vesta, the focusing principle and the high priestess, you have Presepe, which is M44 cancer, so it's the nebula within cancer, the beehive. And this is the, the dimension portal through which incarnating souls are said to come through according to uh, mystic uh, tradition. And on the south node, you have Vindametrix, which is Epsilon Virgo, which is one of the hands of the celestial virgin. Uh, the uh, Alpha stars, Spica or Spica, uh, holds the witchcraft, so it, it's the giving energy, it is the uh, nurturing energy. And Vindametrix is the, the fruit picking and the fruit, of course, is always linked to uh, to carnal uh, uh, pleasures. So it's actually the, uh, the uh, I always say that within the Virgin, you also have the whore. And of course, in the last 2000 years, Virgin Mary tradition kind of eliminated this side of, Vir uh, of Virgo, but the, it's there. And uh, and uh, uh, Matrix is expresses the earthly pleasures. And the Sedna, you have the Pleiades, uh, Sedna is not going anywhere. It has an orbital period of 11,500 years. So it will be actually around this degree all the time for the next two years at least. And on the Black Moon Lilith, you have the Super Galactic Center, which is one of the key celestial areas in karmic astrology, denoting nothing is ever enough. So that is this new moon. It's really star studded. Happy Election Day. I hope you will uh, choose wisely. And I really, really wish that Great Britain uh, will somehow return to normalcy and will the, the politicians will look after their own people and they will be interested in what the people want and how the people live and how the people can uh, actually avoid struggling. This is what I wish for you. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.